Welcome. This is the start of her playthrough video for Richard Berg's game Baton Rouge from the uh, Strategy and Tactics magazine number 133 from many many years ago. Um, I'm going to start this video with a um, quick look at some of the uh, components of the machine of this game which I didn't do in the introduction uh, then I will set up the uh, starting setup off camera and um, we will start with the game and uh, see how far we can get within about an hour. Okay, now um, the game comes with these rules. At the back of the rules we have a rather smashing picture of the game designer Richard Berg himself very much in character for this game and here I have found from another game entirely a picture of um, John Cabell Breckenridge who is the leader of the Confederate Expeditionary Force um, he's depicted on this counter here without any picture. Uh, this, uh, I may be able to find a picture of the Union leader, of the Union garrison, who is Major Brigadier General Thomas Williams. He's depicted on this counter here, which I have marked to distinguish his counter from the other. Union leaders. Now, you see here um, sheets that come with the game that are necessary for um, controlling various factors that come into play. Um, we have here the uh, Confederate roster. Now, the uh, I'm sorry, the Union roster. The Union forces are made up of. Um, regiments, each commanded by uh, a single leader and each regiment is formed of two battalions. So we have counters for each battalion all the way down the line here and then we have uh, three batteries of one, two, three, four, um, four batteries with three sections each in them. Um, of, of artillery varying from howitzers, napoleons, guns, etc. etc. Also, they have uh, two supply wagons, and then we can see here on the map they have three gunboats, uh, a wooden battleship, I don't know what to call it, and here, I'm sorry, I can't zoom in with the uh, recording on this camera and um, the Essex which is um, uh, uh, is an ironclad ok I'm forgetting my terms because it's been a, a long time since I, I, I did the introduction to this game for various reasons I had to have a hiatus from this so um, I'm not into it at the moment, but I'm uh, really excited about getting back into it. Um, so here on the Confederate Expeditionary Force we have a similar um, situation mechanically, but a different organisation um, militarily in that uh, Beckenridge is a major general uh, in command of a division led by Clark with um, two brigades, Helms Brigade and Smith's Brigade and there's quite a few um, regiments in each brigade. Uh, a regiment is represented by, a, a confederate regiment is represented by a single counter in this game. I guess on the whole they are smaller than the um, Union ones. Uh, so Smith's Brigade and Helms Brigade make up Clark's division. There's another division led by Ruggles, um, again with two brigades in it, and then finally um, 
two independent units, uh, some partisan rangers on horseback and uh, a detachment that um, come in on a different track than the main forces and then they have uh, three batteries of two gun sections each uh, uh, two supply wagons, one for each division, and then the Arkansas, which they hope will arrive and save the day um, for the attack against those Union boats sitting, waiting, protecting Baton Rouge. Uh, so you can see that, uh, in a sense, the Confederate forces have a tighter um, command structure in that there are less leaders uh, divided into two divisions each commanded by a separate leader um, and that's what these my own notifications will help to record is um, the, the command and rally points each brigade leader has a each brigade leader has a, a rally point uh, which they can use to rally units. Each division commander and overall commander has command points which they can use to increase the effectiveness of the brigade leaders in uh, a couple of ways. Um, over here on the Union side you have the same thing. The overall commander has command points that he can give to any um, uh, any regimental leader and the leaders each regimental leaders each have a, a, a rally point so um, there's a, a, a there's more uh, overall leaders on the confederate side and um, a tighter bunching of the various regiments so less leaders may, I think, mean that, that they have a, a greater facility at, at coordinating actions. Okay, what else can I say now? Um, yes, I thought I'd quickly show you some of the tables just so you get an idea. Here's the leader casualty table. Um, uh, they can be wounded, killed or captured depending on if it's an assault, small arms fire, canister fire or bombardment. Um, then we have three tables here, one determining when the Confederate Arkansas ship arrives, another concerning vessel versus vessel fire, and another concerning ramming. Now, the, um, there's only three ships that can ram each other, and the Arkansas is the best rammer of them all. So the best hope for the Confederate um, sea, uh, Arkansas is to, to ram the uh, Union um, ironclad into the bottom of the, the river. Um, smash this uh, wooden boat apart, which wouldn't be too hard, and then it could probably pick off the, the lightly armed uh, gunboats. That didn't happen in my prior game, <laughs> but almost, almost. The likelihood is that you drive a boat off rather than it sticking around getting battered enough to be um, destroyed. Then uh, the last table we have here is the Union Picket Detection Table. This you use um, a simple die roll to see, uh, to simulate Union pickets detecting the arrival of the Confederate forces in the morning mist. Okay, now a quick look at some of the other tables. Oh, you can see I have, I'm using some of my own counters because um, uh, I should explain this. These counters are going to mark the actions which um, each regiment or battalion has taken. You can generally take two actions w without much effect within the turn. Then you might become then you become fatigued, and the possibility of that is becoming exhausted. Fatigue, fatigue, and exhaustion take a while to recover from, so it would slow you down or, or cause you to miss the next turn. So um, you can tick these off, but I don't want to keep ticking things off, rubbing them out, so I'm going to use 
these, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to have to be careful not to job the table. Um, then uh, here I have counters for marking units which are in column and uh, here these blue ones are going to mark units which are in modified line which is uh, oh, a, a, a helpful um, wargamer told me the actual term for this this formation but anyway it's, it's a it's not a line formation it's not a column formation but it's to assist in uh, moving through congested urban areas on the map um, I have uh, these black discs which will be used to, to denote disorder and then you can see here the uh, informational markers that come with the game it being a magazine game it didn't have enough um, to cope with all the ones you will need in the game but uh, you can see that um, there are some and they, and they are useful um, for, some, for things like routing, ammo depletion and block mode. Block mode being when a unit is not moving um, along the hexes denoting movement on the streets but is stuck within a block adjacent to all these streets around it. So in block mode you're not in any hex as such, you're in the block and adjacent to all the streets around you and so anything else and, and say so this block would be two the equivalent two hexes away from this block okay so i think i just want to show you these tables which i, I photocopied from, from my ease they came on the, the magazine paper originally um uh, just a quick look at the small arms you can see uh the detail of this game showing you um, the varying effects at varying ranges of muskets, rifled muskets, European rifles, army rifles, breech loading carbines and the deadly at one hex range useless beyond shotguns. And then down here we have the artillery. Above this line is the uh, land based artillery and below is the ship based artillery. The ship based artillery can fire inland but only via bombardment, not direct fire. And um, the value is the strength point value of each is at all ranges is one or going down to a half. So they are not powerful guns against uh, land units. Um, they have different factors when they're used against other naval units. Um, in comparison, we have a, a howitzer, land howitzer, 12 pounds with tens, a 10 point multiplier on strength points at one hex range, 5 point multiplier at two hex range, 2 point multiplier at three hex range. That's simulating canister fire. Um, this is the canister um, fire area. B beyond uh, canister fire, everything has a, a, a multiplier of one or a half on on their their strength points, and uh, the guns are all. Each section is, I think, two strength points, um, denoting two guns. Um, so you can see at, at close range, the guns become lethal. Napoleons have a 9 multiplier, smooth bores have a 6 multiplier, and uh, etc. So, uh, terrain effects on combat chart, uh, density adjustments on um, units stacked in, in a hex. So, if you have a lot of uh, strength points in a hex, you will take more damage um, from packing your men up closely. Stacking restrictions, um, terrain effects on movement. Here is the action chart. These are all the actions that can be taken within a turn. Um, coordinated actions is this group. You, you can move, fire, change formation, change facing, or assault as a brigade, or, or assault combined with another brigade. These are actions commanded by, directly by a, a leader. Uncoordinated actions do not have a leader commandment and uh, include things such as 
artillery and supply wagon movement, cavalry movement, and then artillery fire, and the same sort of things as the leader led movements. And here's administrative actions like rally, field promotion if a leader gets killed, you want to promote another, resupply, etc. It's a real pity that I can't show you the pictures on the counters in a in better detail. Um, I, d I think the focus here is not that good at this range, but here you can see a uh, musket firing um, unit there. On the back, I don't know if you can see that, but he's fleeing away. That's the routed side. Um, Dun, dun, dun. We have, as I showed before, the Parson Rangers, and of course you have the um, artillery on limbered and unlimbered sides, and the supply wagons. Okay, so I think that's enough of a look at the components. Um, now I'll go to the map and uh, set it up ready for the play. So this here is the starting setup for Richard Berg's Baton Rouge. Um, we have the whole map. Uh, I'm a bit nervous because I'm a complete novice at this whole thing so we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to describe a little bit of the plans of the, the two forces and then I will go into some gameplay. I think what I'm going to do to start with is move and work out the mechanics off camera um, until I get back into the rules and then I, I will start explaining a little bit of the rules and performing some of the the rules functions on camera so you can get an idea of, of how the game plays. Um, so to start with uh, here we have the Mississippi River this is Baton Rouge uh, capital of Louisville is that right? and uh, here is a race course here is the state penitentiary it's actually empty at present because um, this is a, a southern city occupied by Union troops. Um, we have Royal Square here, we have the State House here, and we have, uh, there's three hexes, I think these three hexes are the Union Arsenal. You can see this is their encampment and a fortification. It's open on this side, the beach side, but they are, have protection by these four gunboats, this one being uh, the Essex, uh, an ironclad, and a ram ship. The Sumter here is a wooden ram ship, so it's not as powerful a ram as the uh, Confederate Arkansas, which is off map, up river this direction. Now, um, Major General John Cabell Beckenridge, that's this gentleman. I don't know if I can get that in focus, I guess not at the moment. Um, old Whiskery Chops here has the job of uh, capturing um, Baton Rouge from the Union. So he has from 4 o'clock in the morning, 4 a.m until uh, approximately 7 in the evening in which he intends to get the job done. It's quite a daring a attack because um, you can see the unions are, have their, their garrison surrounding the town and we have the boats with their possibility of bombardment protecting from this side. Um, so, what factors are there uh, to support um, Beckenridge's attack? First, until um, 6.15, so the first four turns, there is fog, which means the uh, Confederate advance 
will be under cover of thick dense fog and there's only a chance it, it can be de detected by Union pickets. So the Union forces are stationary until uh, they, the pickets have detected the Confederates. Now the Union I understand were suspecting an attack, they, they knew an attack was coming so um, the forces set up near their camps but uh, the Union forces are set up in line formations. Um, I guess this is just to allow a rapid response out of their tents. I guess they didn't expect such an early morning attack in the fog. Um, however, for the purpose of, of the game, they can set up in line column however you like. I set up. Uh, these are all in uh, specified starting positions. These were the historical positions as best we know. Now, on the Union side, we have a regiment here and a regiment here, and uh, a battery here, and one section of a battery there, and another section of that battery here. Then we have another battery here with three sections and then there's another battery here with two sections and one of its sections there. So um, you can see that this area is heavily defended by artillery and one, two, three, four regiments. There's two regiments back here and there's one regiment forward here. Now the Union plan of defense is that um, these two regiments defend the state house these two regiments defend on the north or the south of the penitentiary as necessary. The intention being to um, hold a line maybe here or maybe up here in the town itself. Um, this force is, uh, is detailed to move back upon holding line here and here and these two regiments are detailed to hold the arsenal. Um, essentially these two are in reserve at the start of the game. They do not become released until, uh, I can't remember, about 9 or 10 o'clock, e even when these are released. So there's some delay in moving, oops, in moving these. The e e Union overall commander is here. So they will essentially be in reserve for the beginning of the game, but um, the, the, the Union plan is that these two regiments and these two regiments support each other, so, so as they fall back, one will be in reserve and one forward, one will be in reserve and one forward, and this one will have to operate on its own. And the, the boats will um, bombard as soon as they're able, they, they can do nothing during the fog. Okay, so so much for the Union defensive plan. Now, the Confederate attack plan is based on two divisions, Ruggles Division here and um, uh, Clark's Division here, Clark's Division having the bulk of the artillery. Um, and a Shields detachment with uh, one um, section of artillery here. The plan being this, that essentially Ruggles Division will come forward and take the State House and Sh Clark's Division will come down this way and capture the arsenal and uh, headquarters of the Union. That's uh, with Shields Division creating a diversion either along this street or through these um, woods. Now, that's the overall plan. Uh, more in detail is that um, Thompson's brigade it plans to flank around the Union forces through the race course here. Ruggles has the uh, Partisan Rangers cavalry with him. They are also detailed to find a gap in the Union line and to come round the back and harry them from, from the rear. 
Allen's brigade is detailed to move up this road and pin the Union forces. So Allen will pin and Thompson will flank. A similar plan for uh, Clark's brigade is that um, Smith's Clark's division, sorry, Smith's brigade coming along this road will pin the Union forces in the centre. So these two brigades from the separate divisions will be pinning the central Union forces and Helm's brigade will penetrate down this road towards the arsenal here um, with assistance from Shields detachment creating diversion up through the woods in the north there. So that's the overall plan. How is it going to go in detail? Well, um, Obviously that will depend on what happens within the game. Um, the, uh, the, the Confederate goals are to capture this state house and the arsenal for a complete win. If they have achieved that and still hold them by the end of um, the 7pm turn, they have won the game. Now you can understand holding this will be quite tricky and even the state house um, because of the uh, of the gunnery from these boats on the Mississippi. Hence this rather bold confederate plan depends somewhat on the arrival of the Arkansas down the Mississippi. Now that is not a dead cert because the Arkansas has been suffering from engine trouble. It may not arrive, it may arrive late and anyway even when it does arrive, though it's a powerful vessel, it has quite a lot to contend with. So we'll see how that goes. If the Confederates um, only hold the arsenal, then they've won a minor victory. But uh, w without the State House, they they have not taken the town. If the Confederates are unable to do either of those things, the Union forces have won. But the Confederates are granted a tactical victory, nevertheless. If the Union have taken 50% more casualties than the Confederates, or there are no Union forces ahead of this street. So if the Union have been pushed back to here, or they have taken 50% more casualties than the Confederates, the Confederates will win a tactical victory. Um, although the, they will not have achieved their objective of capturing the town. Okay, so I think that's all for now. I will pause the video here and uh, make the first movements and then come back to you after I've done that. Okay, so you see here the movement after the first Confederate free movement phase as they are advancing they get a free movement and uh, they've stayed well they can't move very far because they're moving in fog so their movement rate is reduced and they don't get any bonus for using the roads as they're feeling their way through this dense fog it's helpful because it means they stayed far out of range of the Union regiments so there's less likelihood of pickets finding them now the Confederate get the initiative on the first turn which means um, they can, they can uh, perform an action. So we, you will look at the action chart, pick an action, probably a brigade action, and uh, perform that. Now um, I'm actually going to perform an uncoordinated action with the partisan rangers. So they're, it's not led by a leader and uh, they're going to move, attempt to move around here. Now because it's um, the fog, I have to roll for their movement. They're moving in column. All of the Confederates are in column, which will help them in the fog movement rather than spread out in a line. But of course they will have to deploy as soon as uh, things get hot. So, um, six movement points in fog for the Rangers here. Cavalry, one. Um, two, three, four, five, 
and 6. OK, no strain there, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. On a 6, that pickets have detected. No. OK, so now we go to... Um, that was the free initiative. Uh, when you have initiative, you have a free action. Now you have to start rolling for the actions. Um, I'm going to attempt to move uh, this brigade, brigade movement. Um, I have to roll. Uh, I um, have modifiers of a brigade commander's action rating. If the brigade has, if the brigade is LCE, I think that's uh, like a com low combat effectiveness. Is it disordered? No. And is it fatigued or exhausted? No. So it's just going to be affected by the commander's action rating. Now every commander has a command range and the confederates brigade commander's range ranges from 4 to 3, 3 and 2. Um, the uh, union's command ranges are 3 or 2 so you have some better ranges for the confederates and his action rating is plus 1. So what I do is I roll two dice and I hope to get within the range of, I don't know if you can see that because of glare, I hope to get um, 8 or above. Now um, the commander here could spend a point to, um, uh, a command point to increase that action rating but I won't at this point. 3, 4, 5 that means it goes to the Union, so that was unsuccessful. Um, now I think what that means is that uh, it goes to the Union, they perform a free action and then it goes back to the Confederates, but of course the Union cannot move until um, It may not take a uh, movement action and no artillery can bombardment until we have the detection. So um, the only thing the Union could do is perhaps change uh, um, limber some cannons or something like that. I think, or, or change facing. There's nothing for them to do. Um, okay, so but it's still the the union turn, so we will roll. They're going to do nothing, but we still have to roll because we might roll for their next supposed action because we might roll a random event. So the union will. That well, seems strange for them to have nothing to do. Okay. Okay, so that that go, that's definitely going back to the Confederates. Um, so the Confederates get one free action, which is what they wanted anyway. So this is a bit moot at the moment with the Union not being able to move or, and no firing happening. So uh, these fellows are going to move forwards. One, two, three, four. I don't have to roll because they're following the road. So that's relatively safe in the fog. One, two, three, four, five, six. So on a six they are detected. No. Okay, will the Confederates get another action? I'm going to this one. He gets plus one. Helm. Four, five. Ah, it goes to the Union again. Again, the Union are not limbering any guns or any such. So back. The Union roll. Seven. There you go. A random event. Now the random event is the roll of 2D. That's six. 
The partisans charged neither wisely nor well. If a Fock Turner CSA cavalry unit charges the nearest unit regardless of side. If two units are equidistant, blah blah blah. So, one, two, three, four. So the partisan cavalry are going to charge them. And um, how do we do a charge? Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Okay, well you're getting an idea of some of the colour uh, of this. Um, so the cavalry must start the charge from two to four hexes distant, and the charge movement is part of the assault action. So they, they think there's some Union pickets here. One, two, three. Okay, right, I'm going to go off camera again and check how that works out. Um, because the cavalry at the moment are in column, I don't know if they can charge when they are in column. Let's see. Okay, so I have continued the turn. Um, the Confederates have been moving up. Uh, this brigade got separated in the fog. Essentially this unit wandered around in a circle, ended up back where it started, sorry, this stack. Um, we have the artillery and wagons, supply wagons, in the rear hexes. Um, the parts and rangers got so far, uh, and uh, they didn't actually charge. Because they're in column, they could not charge. Um, the uh, the Union have detected, they detected the movement here, so now these are all alert and they can move. So consequently, Clark woke up and he moved uh, one of his battalions from here that got a bit lost in the fog. Um, he used two um, uh, actions to get his, his battalions in this formation with the artillery in the middle there. The, um, in between there was a random event and this battalion actually fired upon their own uh, battery here. Um, fortunately because um, of the density of the battery it's not a dense unit and the fog uh, there was no actual um, harm done but alarming events occurring in the fog. So it's the Union uh, initiative. Um, Clark's taken two ac movement actions, so any more, and his his um, brigade will become fatigued. And um, all of the Confederates have taken one movement action, and uh, except for Shields' attachment that hasn't moved at all. So the Union have another. Um, roll to make and uh, Dudley is going to, tr to try to roll um, for an action. Um, no, on second thoughts uh, Keith is going to, to roll. He wants to move his fellows up into the cemetery here. So he gets, uh, only he gets a minus one on his action. Um, Okay, so before that, Dudley will try to roll. He wants to throw up his, his throw his battalions forward. So we need a six or less for movement action. Yep. Okay. So Dudley's brigade is good to go. The, the uh, brigadier can move with his folks. These are in line, so they're going to attempt to move there. Okay, one, two, three, and okay, he'll try and move into here. No, he would move into there, but he has not enough movement points. So you see, rolling because of the fog. Um, uh, these fellows will move up. One, two, attempt to move there. So actually go there. One, two, three, we'll attempt to move there. And succeed. Okay. 
you can change facing at any point during movement so there and and movement there and uh, uh, neither uh, none of this artillery can move because it's all unlimbered um, Dudley's got a command range of three maybe I should have unlimbered those first or uh, limbered them up rather um, no he's going to leave them there because he's not sure what the confederates are doing ok so we'll try for Keith he's on a minus one. Oh no that's a bonus yes because Confederates, uh, the Union want a low roll, so this could be good. That would be a random event, but minus one gives Keith. So he's actually a good active commander, so his guys will try to go forward. Trying for here. One. Oh, that's my timer. I have to stop this, so I'll just finish this um, sequence. So one, two, Okay, no, I say one, two, one, two, three, two, three, because these have got roads, X is there, okay, one, two, three, and this guy, one, two, three, and he will try to cross there. Three, four, yes, I think that's fine. Keith will go with him. And there's a battery left behind there. The battery's not so useful in the fog because there's a two hex range um, maximum. Okay, um, so Nick Nickerson will try to move his folks to defend the road more um, carefully. Five, that's good. Oh, hang on a minute, I've got uh, Keith's have moved, so I have to record that. And Nickerson's are moving, so I'll record that. It's a fatigue action. Um, okay, so moving into a road hex, so they'll be alright. One, two, what's that? Orchards, I think they're uh, just more movement. Orchards, 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 cornfields, rather. Cornfields. Two movement points for line. Okay, so attempting to move into here. No, so they move there by accident. One. Again, attempting to move into here. No. Two. Um, going around in circles, getting lost. Attempting to move into here again. Last chance. No. So they end up here. Oops. Okay. Somewhat staggered, and I'll move Nixon back to them. Okay. Uh, so the Union are getting quite active. Okay. So Roberts will try to wake up, and he's going to. Um, Limber the artillery. So what's that? That's change formation. That could be part of his whole brigade changing formation. So he has no TCT bonus, but it's still fine. Changing formation is not a fatigue action. Okay. These are limbered, we'll limber them all, I think. And, um, they'll stay in line. No, they won't, they'll go into column in anticipation of. Them. Desk, some uh, tactical movement. Okay. And Dudley will attempt to, to, to limber these artillery. Five, six, yes. Okay. So the Union are being quite impressive. 
Uh, so that was, what was it? That was um, one, two, three, four. Now that's four activations for the Union, so it automatically has to go back for, for one to the Confederates. And then we go back to a Union roll. Um, if they wish to continue, you can always pass to the opposite side. So the Confederates are going to um, swing their cavalry around. Uh, ah, yes, might get lost. So um, one. so a bit of meandering there. He's still in column. Ah. But I hope he's not fired upon. Okay, now we go back to the Union. Oh, I should have used that to um, change formation of some of these Confederates. So, uh, what are they going to attempt to do? Do we want to move up some cannons? Yes, one at least. So Dudley's going to attempt to order up this section. He is successful. That's a movement action. I don't believe uh, artillery don't get fatigued. Um, in that movement action he could move the rest of his uh, command. Better put these to face the hex side if they're in column. Okay, so one, two, three, four. He's hoping to move to here. No, he's hoping to move to here. No, so he goes one, two. Three, because that's a road, so we okay. Three, four, and what's the movement for? Uh, artillery five in the fog, and let take on the road. You can't count it. It becomes a one. Oh, yes, becomes a not a half movement point in fog. So. Five. Okay, fine. Now stacking order does have an effect, but I'll check that later. Now I think artillery can fire out if they're on the top or bottom, but the top unit normally is the one that fires. Um, okay, so the Union organising nicely. Um, Dudley's done another movement action, that's a fatigue action. Well, that's his first, in fact. No, that was his second, wasn't it? I must have missed him first. Okay, so I think his guys have stopped for this turn, this three quarters of an hour. Um, um, do we want to move this cannon up? No, I don't think we do. What do we want to do? These fellows want to fire upon them. We're going to have a fire action. Robert Nicholson attempting a fire action. Three. That's good to go. Okay, so what do we have? We have um, army rifles. Um, eight strength points of army rifles. Is that 800 men or 18 this game? I can't remember. Um, anyway, so we, uh, a range of 2 is multiplier of 1. So we have um, on the 8 column, we have uh, da, 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 that's not enfiladed, not through rear, not artillery rapid fire. The density, now this density is almost maximum. And there in the column, this is not going to be great. So the density table shows us that we get 
plus one or plus two. What's that? Eight. Yeah. That's maximum sixteen strength points. So that's going to be plus two columns. And terrain, that's been no effect. Small arms in fire in the cob is mi in the fog is minus one. Okay, so net effect on the nine to thirteen column. Oops. A three. A three result is D, which is a flat disorder check. Roll one die, minus one if stacked with a leader, which it is. Is it greater than the morale of the top unit? Four? No, because we're minus one. I rolled a five, morale of four. Okay, so no disorder there. And uh, I, I need to keep track of, I think that's the second union action in a row. Um, okay, he can attempt to fire again, which he will. Four, that is successful. So the same column. Seven, I think you can fire four times in a row um, before having to stop. Six. Now we have an essay which is a small arms um, fire. Roll one die to see if it's low ammo. One to three ammo low, yes. So these guys are popping away. Okay. But the result is a D stroke, uh, disorder stroke right check. So it's definitely disordered and that you possibly right. So we've got round of four, two, no, so that's disorder. Okay. Ah, normally you can return fire, but because these folks are in column, I believe there's no return fire. Um, yes. You can't fire it in column, only the modified column or column of companies, as I was informed. Okay, so we've had three actions in a row. Uh, these chats will attempt to fire once more. Five, and that's good to go. So what do they get? A four. M. Make morale check. So we've got a morale of four. The union is stacked with a commander and it's stand effective. Before you've had any casualties, you are stand effective generally. Um, I think there's one regiment that is, has no stand effectiveness. The 7th, Robert 7th Vermont on the union side. Anyway, here we go. We've got a 2. So that is less than the morale rating. Oh, we don't have any other bad modifiers. Okay, so nothing happens. Um, and now we have to have a obligatory confederate action. That's going to be change formation. So they're coming out of column. And now we go back to the union. Um, I think this is one more or was that four? I've lost count. Okay, for the sake of it, I'm going to move to another unit. Okay, Dudley is going to. Where is Dudley? He's up two move fatigue actions. No, he's going to stay where he is. Um, but Nickerson's going to bring up his other battalion. Or at least attempt to. Five, six. That's good. Okay, it's 
so Italian B takes another fatigue action and moves up move this one with him and now I wonder if what's the line of sight through there they are disordered um, okay so I've got a couple of things to check there so I'm going to resolve this and then I'm going to leave it there for now I have to check about line of sight and if columns can fire at all I don't think they can um, let's just see if Nickerson gets his roll no so we go over to the confederates with a free initiative put those on the confederate side to remind me and we're going to stop there for now while I go and eat something <laughs>